Hey everybody, I have a joy to share with you all today. And that is, for the first time in several weeks, I feel like I have some things to look forward to. While you all might not be quite as nerdy about things related to church as I am, I'm hoping that by sharing my excitement, you might catch a little bit of the anticipation. Next weekend, the church staff has decided to share a worship service with you that was created by the United Church of Christ Council of Ministers. One of my most favorite things about working with the wider church is opportunities for collaboration, and this is collaboration at its finest. Conference ministers across the United States are inviting you into their living rooms and offering messages of hope and love. It's the virtual version of a worship service at an event like General Synod, and it's really cool. In two weeks is my absolute favorite church holiday and Bible story, Pentecost. I'm trying to make the best of the fact that we won't be able to worship together and celebrate the birthday of the church as we know it together. So I've been thinking up ideas for how to share all the things I love about Pentecost with you. Stay tuned for ways that you can be a part of the special things for worship on Pentecost. Today, I have a beautiful book to share with you too. Our weekly family faith encouragement email this week talks about active listening. Active listening means listening and looking at the other person, responding to their words, not focusing on what you might want to say next, stuff like that. It feels so good when we are heard seen, and loved when someone actively listens to us. And we all have the power to make someone else feel that way too. We were created to live in community, to love and be loved by others. This book I have to share today is designed to help remind you of how much you are loved and I hope that then you take all that beautiful love created in you and use your gifts and talents that are uniquely yours to show someone else how loved they are. Especially right now, we need to remind each other how much we are loved and of the big dreams that God has for us to love each other. I'm going to read the words for you from the book, When God Made You, by Matthew Paul Turner. Matthew Paul Turner is yet another author who has agreed for his works to be read, recorded, and shared during these challenging months. The illustrations by David Catro are so gorgeous and detailed. They just don't translate well to video, so if you like what I read, I encourage you to get your hands on a copy of the book and study the illustrations. I'm also choosing only to share the words today because I want you to listen. Actively listen and know that you are seen, heard, and loved as I read to you. The message in this book applies to God's children of all ages, children, youth, adults, it doesn't matter. But I specifically dedicate my retelling of this story today to our teenagers. When God Made You by Matthew Paul Turner. You, you, when God made you, 
God made you all shiny and new, an incredible you, a you all your own, a you unlike anyone else ever known. An exclusive design, one God refined. You're a perfectly crafted one of a kind, because when God made you, somehow God knew that the world needed someone exactly like you. You, you, God thinks about you. God was thinking of you long before your debut. From the very beginning, amid history and time, you, little one, never left God's mind. God imagined your eyes, your head's shape and size, and knew what you'd look like when you felt surprised. God pictured your nose and all of your toes, the sound of your voice. God had it composed. The lines on your hands, your hair, every strand. God knew every detail like it was all planned. Out of billions of faces from cultures, all races, people God made from all different places, God knew your name. Your picture is framed. God's family without you would not be the same. Because when God made you, this much is true. The world got to meet who God already knew. You, you, when God sees you, God delights in what is and sees only what's true. That you, yes you, in all of your glory, bring color and rhythm and rhyme to God's story. So be you, fully you, a show-stopping review. Live your life in full color, every tint, every hue. Discover, explore, have faith, but love more. And learn and relearn all that God made you for. Use your talents and passions, those gifts that God fashioned. Think of ideas and then put them to action. Because God loves you creating, your true self displaying when light on the inside through art is portraying. When you make believe, the stories conceived, the heroics, the magic, those tricks up your sleeve. When you dance alone, spinning like a cyclone, being whoever, whatever, in a world all your own. God smiles, and here's why. In the spark of your eye, a familiar reflection shines bright from inside. Because when God made you, and the world ood and odd, in heaven, they called you the image of God. You, you, when God dreams about you, God dreams about all that in you will be true. That you, God's you, will be hopeful and kind, a giver who lives with all heart, soul, and mind. A dreamer who dreams in big and small themes, one who keeps dreaming in journeys upstream. A mover, a shaker, a lover of nature. A builder of bridges, you, the peacemaker. A you who views others as siblings, sisters and brothers, and lives by three words, love one another. A confident you, strong and brave too, you being you is God's dream coming true. Because when God made you, all of heaven was beaming. Over you, God was smiling and already dreaming. <laughs>